Hi there, it's me, Elliot Fears here again. Um, this is my second X10 Home Automation video. Um, this video is a follow-up of my first X10 Home Automation video that I recorded about a year and a half ago. Um, I'm apologising in advance if this video gets a bit long. That's because I've got a lot to show you. Anyway, first of all, just a little bit about um, X10. X10 is a home automation protocol that has been around since the, sort of the late 70s and is well established. Um, the home automation protocol is sort of like an amateur semi-professional in the terms that anyone can really sort of buy X10 and anyone can configure it and set it up. Um, now, every X10 device has um, an address and the address ranges from a house code varying from A to P and a unit code varying or ranging from 1 to 16 so you've got 16 house codes and 16 unit codes given a maximum total um, combinations of 256 um, that's how many unique X10 addresses there are because 16 times 16 is 256 now each X10 device in my house is, is on a different ad address although you can set multiple ad uh, multiple devices on the same address that's a basic how X10 is addressed and of course there's lots of different modules such as the light switch there and the plug down there and other things that I'll show you later in the video anyway um, I'm going to first start by going around all of the devices in my house and sort of showing you what they are and what they do and what um, X10 address code they are on anyway as I'm in my sewing room first of all this is um, an X10 appliance switch with um, sort of a light on the front um, the appliance switch can be used to control devices um, such as washing machines and um, wired in appliances as well as lights what can't be dimmed such as fluorescent light bulbs and sort of ordinary ceiling fans um, now if I take the cover off of this if you just give me a minute now here you see um, there's two code wheels the red one is a house code wheel and the black one is a unit code wheel so for example that um, this X10 module is on A15 and that is sort of a better indication of how things are configured so obviously 16 on that, 16 combinations on the red wheel or the house wheel and 16 com combinations on the black wheel or the unit wheel and the appliance modules that you wire into the wall or at least the ones that I use have a little um, red LED to tell you that the module is, is on the cover just pops back on anyway that's um, a way that you set the address on this particular module we've got more of these around the house but anyway um, yeah this module here is on A15 and it controls my ceiling fan and light in the sewing room um, got a plug socket down there what's well, got a manual switch as well was plugged into the kettle currently um, that is on A11 so if we come out of this room we go into the hallway and go into the spare bedroom I've got another switch, what a light switch um, this switch you can dim it up and down by pressing and holding it or just pressing to turn it on and off it's also got a 2 amp fuse built into it and it works exactly the same way as a pot as an appliance switch although it's designed for lower loads such as lights that can be dimmed um, you set the address exactly the same way on this one as you do on the appliance switch I won't take the cover off of that um, coming to here we've got um, sort of a plug-in lamp dimmer this is the new type that's been around for several years now if you press the button once the lights come on press it again they go off and um, I've got that plugged into an extension lead what the two lamps are then plugged into um, the codes in here I believe 
they are um, A9, that switch operates that, so that's A9, um, the lamps are A10, and of course the plug socket in the room is A11, so um, this is like a palm tree remote pad that you can get, I've just stuck it on this little thing, so of course I can turn the lamps on and off, I can turn the main light on and off by it, and of course I can turn the plug socket off and on, and on in the other room, what you just heard then, plus um, if I turn the lights on, you've got a dimmer and brighter button at the bottom, what um, changes the brightness setting of the last device controlled, such as the three, or in two in this case, because you can't dim the plug socket, but yeah, um, lamps on or off on you can dim them it's just as you can dim that so I can sort of then make this dimmer um, and of course the light module or lamp module has a manual override button um, on it so that's the um, spare bedroom or the first spare bedroom if you come into my bedroom um, got another switch like um, in the spare bedroom this X10 address code is on A8 um, got a mini timer here what can um, turn devices on and off at preset times such as in the mornings with sort of manual overhead buttons it can, control, it can control any device on any house code ranging from 1 to 4 or 5 to 8 so here you've got um, an address code 1 to 4 and 5 to 8 so it can only control 4 devices um, manually at a time without changing the sort of selector switch so of course um, on 1 to 4 these buttons do 1, 2, 3, 4 on the um, address code and so on that mode it does 5, 6, 7 and 8 the timer can also vary um, the time things come on and off in the morning to give it a more sort of lived in look so the time things come on and off would um, be varied slightly it also has battery backup um, the fan over there is plugged into a plug socket just as you saw in a sewing room that's on A7 um, and here we have sort of like a manual remote here we have a little bit of cardboard that you can um, write what stuff is on what and here we have the X10 um, house code selector um, and the sort of unit code 1 to 8 and 9 to 16 so there's 1, 2, 3 all the way down to 8 and then you do it to 9 to 16 and that does 9, 10, 11 all the way down to 16 and the blue buttons give the dimmable option if I just try and do something in a minute just give me a minute so that's the sort of remote for you when the little red wheel there changes the um, X10 house code of the sort of remote It's just powered by some little tri AAA batteries. If I come out of this room now um, and turn the light off, we'll go um, across the hallway landing. Um, this one here is exactly the same switch as in the sewing room, apart from it's on A16 and it controls the um, fluorescent light bulbs in my mum's office come into the second spare bedroom we've got another sort of dimmable light switch and a lamp over there um, this address or the switch for the main light is on B5 and the lamp over there is on B6 um, the lamp over there has the same sort of module as the lamps in the spare bedroom that you saw plugged into the wall Again, you can dim it and it's got a fuse, just as all the sort of um, 
lamp modules on the wall have, although the appliance modules, as in such rooms as like that, don't have the fuses on them. And of course, they can take higher loads. Um, now, also in the loft, there's sort of like um, a transceiver module, what looks like the same sort of module as in the spare bedroom, and the one in there, what I didn't show you, apart from it has an aerial, so it like receives signals from like the wireless devices such as the remote I just showed you and then sent it down the mains wiring to turn the appropriate device on or off um, come downstairs into the dining room um, in here we have um, sort of the main light on here that's on A12 so, so that's A12 um, the lamp here is on A1 you can dim both of those the lamp there is on the same sort of module as that's in the spare bedroom and the spare bedroom too um, in the living room we have two main lights on the ceiling with sort of like a dual light dimmer switch this light doesn't have a fuse as the other ones does as it is a different type um, you press and hold down to turn it on and make it brighter and you press and hold up to turn it off and make it dimmer obviously the left one does a left light and the right switch on the right side does a light over there the addresses are A13 and A14 um, again you can make them dimmer and brighter um, here we have a switch um, it's the same as the one over there, but apart from I've only got one light wired to the right hand side, it controls the outside patio light, what I'll show you a bit later. So that turns it on and that turns it off. Um, the left one isn't wired up to anything. Um, the lamp over here is plugged into the same sort of module as the one in the dining room and in the spare bedroom, etc. Um, that's on the left, and the module on the right um, is plugged into the hi fi. It's just like the sort of plug sockets that I showed you earlier in my bedroom and in the sewing room. Apart from rather than it being hardwired in, it plugs in. So that's a dimmer one that can control sort of up to sort of, I think, is it um, something like 900 watts or 400, whatever it is. So that one you can dim and that one you can just turn it on and off, but it's what's higher low. So I had that one plugged into the high file radio. Um, come out of here now. Oh, just to let you know, I've got another timer. A bit different to the one in my bedroom, but apart from um, it's not as sort of wide on features, it hasn't got any manual control of, the, of the, the devices, and the way you program it is by sending an X10 command, also with battery backup. It's currently nearly half eight. Um, yeah, just to sort of tell the dress code, the lamp is on. A3 and the hi fi is on um, A5. The patio light is on B3. So, um, yeah, that's that for you. You may have noticed that in the hall I've got a lava lamp. Again, like a plug in appliance module, just as in there, it is on B2. I won't turn everything on and off because it just takes time up in the video. We come into the kitchen, got a kettle on A6, so what I do is sometimes I turn that off and have the switch down and then in the mornings I turn it on and the kettle boils. Now I'll go into the garden briefly. Now at the top of the garden you may have seen a floodlight on. That's just um, essentially a floodlight plugged into an appliance module just as there is um, in a sort of living room and did the hallway for the lava lamp um, now the patio light is over there although you probably can't see it and if I just walk a bit further the patio light will come on um, in the corner we've got a PIR what um, essentially turns the light on when movement is detected and then it turns the light off four minutes later Providing no movement's been detect detected. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, you, you can see the reflection. Got a pond fountain um, that's in the sh that is plugged into the shed as well. Um, so in the shed, I've got my floodlight. What you saw maybe at the top of the garden 
when I was in my bedroom, plugged in, that's on B1 and the pump pump is on um, B4 and that's on B3 as I um, mentioned earlier. So floodlight is on B1, light there, B3, lava lamp, B2 and that pump pump is B4. Um, pump pump and floodlight is plugged in with appliance modules on the plug sockets in the shed. Um, the PIR in the garden also has a feature to like send a, a command out when it gets bright and when it gets dark, so like dusk and dim, so I mean dusk and dawn sort of thing, but um, I haven't got that enabled. Although the PIR can turn lights on and off when it gets dark at night and when it gets bright in the morning, so that's that for you. Um, come into the garage. Essentially, in the garage, we've got the garage door, was just simply controlled by an X10 relay. So when you send a signal, or more specifically a B9 signal, the B9 signal um, makes a relay contact for a brief couple of seconds. What then, of course, opens the garage door with the motor down there. Um, the X10 relay has got various options such as sounder only, sound and relay and relay only as well as a contact or the sort of relay can either stay closed until a off signal is, is um, sent or um, momentary so like it closes or it makes contact on the relay for a couple of seconds and breaks again that's what I've got set so when I send a signal the relay closes making a complete circuit opening the garage door and then it breaks two seconds later so um, that's the way essentially it, it makes it like a bell push so it, it, it just briefly makes contact um, the module also has a manual on and off override um, that's plugged in as well as you can see so it's basically just an X10 controlled relay that there is something else that was some outside lights that I used to have but the transformer broke so that is no longer wired up and don't worry it's all safe um, the wire to the timer is here and it's not plugged in or anything or wired in for the same just to come out the garage now um, if, we go in, if we go into the sort of I think the next room will be the downstairs toilet um, we have another sort of appliance switch, as the lights in this room have um, compact fluorescent bulbs or energy uh, saving bulbs. When you walk in the light comes on automatically. Um, again, got a sensor up there, the same as in the garden, apart from in fact it's exactly the same. It turns off, it turns off after four minutes and it's, got, and it's got the option to sort of send a signal when it gets um, dark and bright, it kept us like dusk and dawn, or dusk to dawn, um, so that's that. Um, in here we've got the office light, another energy energy saving bulb. Um, by the way, the garage is on B9 as I said, that's on A4, this is on A2. Um, so, yep. Yeah. What I've forgot to mention upstairs I think was that um, something I, I, I'll think of it but yes so um, so I'll show you my computer room in a minute although what I will first show you um, It will, it will come to me. Oh yeah, that, that's what it was. Uh, X10 filters. Um, as you see over there, there's certain filters and certain devices create sort of noise, noise on the line and interfere with the X10 signals. And I've got filters plugged into some devices in the house who are sort of rectify the problem by filtering out the noise created by certain devices such as the old CRT TV. Um, so that's that. Also got a sort of like another sort of remote type as here. Um, again, you you set the address and the house code, and you can control things and make things brighter and dimmer for 
um, sort of devices to what support that function. So I think I've covered most devices. I've covered so yeah, I've covered the lamps and covered them. Yeah, so going to my office now. Um, I'll I'll show you my I'll show you briefly my automation program. It's called Domia Harmony. The edition that I've got is Domia Harmony 2007 Home. Essentially, here I've got all all of the devices, and I can turn things on and off and turn various things and dim things and make things brighter, such as. I can turn the, this office light on and turn it off and on again. Um, so this program will support an unlimited amount of devices, although it only supports three devices on the trial version, as it is a paid and registered registered for program. Um, here you can create events and stuff so you can have like lights coming on in the evening at preset times or at dusk and so on um, create sort of like complicated routines and macros or macro like things so I can make living, the living room light go to 30% brightness etc um, you may see here this is like where I, where I add all my um, sort of things you may notice that I've got zero before everything Oh, pardon me, everything. That's just so, let's say, when I turn, if, if I didn't have zero before it, it I, I wasn't, sometimes it, sometimes it didn't come out quite right. So, obviously, if you make something brighter or dimmer by 70%, it would give different results. So, adding a zero before I um, tell the sort of device to the sort of required brightness, it was just a way that I found that I could guarantee that it would operate properly and that it would be the proper brightness that I wanted it at otherwise sometimes it would be really dim or really bright what I did not want so it's just a way that I've personally found that I can make sure the, de the devices um, are at the proper brightness because obviously if, if you um, have it at 0% first and then make it brighter by 70% you know it's going to be 70% bright although 70% brighter or dimmer would give different results because obviously <laughs> You're only sort of saying the seventy percent. You're not saying which way you're going. I brighter or dimmer. Uh, I'll leave the program for now. I'll, I'll make a separate video on that at another time. The program really deserves its own um, video that I will do with a sort of a screen caption program and in greater detail. Although, if you come over to my um, desktop, we here have um, a sort of X10 page. Essentially, it's just like the program over there, apart from it, so I can control the 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 the, the, the program. Essentially, lets me control my devices from around the world with any internet connection. So um, it's like that over there, but not as graphically friendly and not as as should we say fancy. So yeah, I, I, if you zoom in, I can turn things on and off, and it shows me what sort of brightness things are at and what state they're in and various zones in X10 address um, I can also sort of go to my events and trigger things such as evening lights on what is the thing I've got so um, in, the, in the evening when it gets dark my living room lights come on at a certain brightness to make sort of like a sort of light show to make it sort of like themed lighting if you know what I mean anyway um, yeah this will probably come part of a separate video as I'll do with my um, thing because the sort of thing you see over there and the thing you see here are very sort of related together um, yeah and I've hidden my IP address <laughs> for obvious reasons although um, what I will say is that um, I can control it just as that page there from any sort of internet connection in the world such as via my iPhone or via Blackberry etc so it's very sort of fast program with a lot of capabilities anyway um, I'm going to close the program down now um, and there's sort of all, all the events and everything, but again, I'll show you that in a separate video. What will be along with in the same video as that sort of internet page. Um, 
down here briefly, we have a CM11 module. All it simply is, is a module, um, it's got a battery compartment, although I've got no batteries in it at the moment. It stores sort of backup um, events or programs in a power failure. Anyway, the program simply talks to this module down here via USB cable with a USB to serial converter. So when I say, click a thing on there and turn it on, or click a thing online and turn it on from around the world, the program sends a, cable, a signal down this cable to a sort of module that then sends a signal down the main wiring to turn the appropriate device on or off or make it bright and dimmer etc so essentially the battery compartment is just for like backup purposes in the event of a power failure if you start sort of programs and sort of macros in it although um, I haven't got any batteries in it at the moment so that's basically it really um, I don't think I left anything out, although if I've forgotten like, any ten address or anything, just email me at elliottechshow at o2.co.uk That's elliottechshow at o2.co.uk um, I'm going to probably finish the video off in the place that I started it, upstairs. Although, what I will say I forgot to mention was this <laughs> module here. It's simply a module that you can wire to a hardwired device such as a PIR or a thermostat or an infrared beam etc. And then when that gets triggered by a hardwired device, what you wire to these terminals here, it sends a signal to turn a device on or off. And it can also flash devices in like a certain pattern in the event of let's say you wired it to an infrared beam, you could set it to a sort of mode 2 and it would like say flash all of the lights on um, house code A on and off so really um, it just lets you control X10 devices with a hardwired device and it's got various modes such as voltage input or closed contacts and just control one device or control all of the devices on the house code and so on so it's called a power flash module or power flash interface so essentially that's all it is, it's a hardwired to an X10 interface so when you trigger something, it sends a signal down the main wiring to, to control the, the device. Anyway, um, I'm going to finish it here. So again, if you have any questions, please email me at elliottechshow at o2.co.uk. I'm more than happy to help you with anything, technically that is. Um, so um, I hope I haven't missed anything. Although until my next video, um, please post comments and leave video responses if you want to. And until then, can I say, I'll see you later.